Hi again! Previously what I did was I opened Visual Studio Code, the editor that I'll use in this course to write Python code, and then in the Visual Studio Code editor I opened a terminal, new terminal, and then I started a Python session, which you can do with either Python, or if you are on Windows, or Python 3 if you are on Mac. So that will start a Python session, and you can see these three arrows. That means Python is now running and you can start to write Python code. So that code, for example, gives you the current time. Great. Uh, but what happens now if I close Visual Studio Code and then the next day I open it again? And then I go to the terminal, new terminal. You'll see that the code I wrote in the previous session has disappeared. So when you start Python with Python or Python 3, that's an interactive shell. Uh, it lets you test the code to see what output you get quickly, but it doesn't let you save the code. If you want to reuse the code, you want to save it in a file. That's what we're going to do now. First of all, you want to go to File and then Add Folder to Workspace. With that, what you want to do is, you want to pick a folder in your computer. For example, I have created an empty folder here. I named it the basics. You can name it whatever you want. You want to pick that folder. So click Add. And that folder will be added to the Visual Studio Code workspace now. You can see the name of the folder here. And now what I can do is I can go to File and go to New File. Or you can just click here. It's the same thing, this new file icon. And then give a name to the file. Name it whatever you want, except of date time.py. Don't do that because we are using the date time module and Python will get confused if you use that name. So use whatever name you like. I'll just use basics.py. Press enter. And now a, a file has been created in the, the basics folder. If you don't trust me, just go to your file explorer, what you have on Windows, uh, Windows Explorer, or the Finder on Mac, and you'll see that the basics.py file, in my case, has been created in that folder. So now we are actually editing that file inside Visual Studio Code Editor. Now here I'm going to write the same code that I wrote in the Python interactive shell. Once you have done writing the code, make sure to save it. Either go to File and click on Save, or just use the shortcut Ctrl S or Command S. So Ctrl S if you are on Windows, Command S if you are on Mac. And then if you want to execute this code, you want to click on the terminal. Now, be careful here. Currently, we are inside the Python session. You can see these arrows. If you have these arrows, that means you are inside the Python session. Uh, we want to exit the Python session now. We are not writing interactive code. We are going to execute this file. To execute the file, you want to be on the terminal. So click exit here with this round parenthesis press enter, and you are back on the terminal. Now here you can write Python, which is usually the command on Windows, or Python 3, which is usually the command on Mac and Linux. Use whatever works for you. And then here you want to type the name of the file that you have created. In my case, that is basics.py. Execute. And you're not going to get an output. So in the Python interactive shell, uh, we can use this icon here to split the terminal. So we have two terminals now. I can use one as a terminal here, and I can use the other as an interactive Python shell by just typing Python or Python 3. So here we can write code interactively. You can write lines of code there, like import daytime, and then daytime.daytime.now, and you get the output. As you can see, here we didn't get an output. The reason is that we didn't give an instruction in the file of what to do with this result here. This will produce this result, as you can see in here. 
uh, but you need to print out the result explicitly when you write code in a file. That is the difference, the big difference between the interactive shell and the Python files. So in order to do that, you want to add print just before that expression and this expression now should go inside parentheses so just after print open a parenthesis and after this expression close the parenthesis so this expression is inside the parenthesis of the print function this is a function it prints out something in this case this is something again save the code with ctrl s or command s don't forget and then here you can either write the command again or just press the upper arrow key to call the previously executed command python3basics.py execute and you get the output as you can see this is formatted a bit different than this here uh, the reason is that in the interactive shell the interactive python shell is meant more for you as a programmer to test things out so when something is called like that you get a more raw output so it says it tells you that this is the daytime and it gives you the year by uh, divided by commas from the month and here you get the same basically the same result but formatted in a nicer way because this is meant more for for the end user to see the date time in this case if you want a nice format in here, you want to use a print function. Print, open and close parentheses, and basically you, you get the same format as in here. So you, you can use a print function both in the Python file and in the terminal, but you cannot have implicit printing in a Python file like we did with Python interactive shell in here. I've noticed that some students, what they do is mm, they are inside the Python inter interactive shell, which you can tell when you see these three arrows. And inside here, what they try to do is they try to execute a Python file. For example, they try to do this. If I press enter now, I'm going to get a syntax error. That is because in this interactive shell, Python expects Python code, like these things here, import daytime and daytime.daytime.now, but this is not Python code. This is actually a command you give to your computer. Uh, the computer knows that it has this kind of program, Python 3, so it opens, it calls the Python program, and then it executes this file with, Py with a Python program. So this is a command you give to your computer and you do that through the terminal in this here. Your terminal will understand that, but not the Python interactive shell. And lastly, let's make this program look more like a program. So currently we get the date time like this as output, uh, but what you can do is you can add another print function here and inside the parentheses just write something inside quotes so it should be inside double quotes and write something like in this case I'd like to write the date and time is make sure to save with file save or control s or command s and then go here upper arrow key execute with enter and you get this output the date time the date and time is and you get the current date and time in here now if you are one of them who is wondering how can we get both these lines in one single line and to do that you need to use one single print function that gets two arguments so this is the first argument that prints will print out and the second argument would be date time dot date time dot now so the expression that outputs the current date time. Don't forget to save, go here, execute, and this is the output. So the date and time is this one in here. 
And that is how you can create Python programs. So basics.py is the Python program I created in this lecture. Talk to you later.